G'day. Possibly the final part of bootstrapping a mill. Don't know. Have to have to wait and see whether I think of anything else that might be uh, manufacturable and usable to, to someone. But today I'm I'm doing a small vice. Now this is a uh, a simple sort of vice, and I'll show you a picture of it in a minute. This is actually one by uh, Rudy Kophout. I hope I've I've said that properly. Uh, he was a long-time model engineer contributor to. Uh, Home Shop Machinist Magazine among others and uh, this is actually from uh, the Home Shop Machinist Magazine Volume 10 Number 6 which was published back in uh, November December 1991 so quite old. Uh, Rudy died about 20 years ago. I'm not sure how I stand with copyright on this because copyright is typically I think 70 years after the death of the author and so uh, it could still be in copyright. Uh, so as a result, I'm not going to be showing you the, the drawings that come with the article, but uh, talking a little bit about them and uh, discussing some of the methods that are used. Uh, if you want to make one of these yourself, you may have to chase up that uh, reference. I'll put that uh, reference down the bottom in the, um, the comments thing for the video. So you can chase that one up if you like. But it's a pretty straightforward sort of vice, and once you see it, you'll be able to make up your own mind about whether you need the, the official drawings or whether you can just invent your own, because it's, it's very straightforward. This is the, uh, the style of vice that uh, I'm going to be making. And it's basically two rails on a piece of plate with some holes across here. There's a rod that goes through with a thread in it. And then there's another rod that goes through this jaw with a, with a bolt. Uh, that goes into that thread and that tends to pull the, the jaw down as well as along. Uh, so it's quite a quite a neat little vice, uh, not, not terribly large but at the same time if you've got a small milling machine it's probably you know quite good enough to start off with and I find that uh, even when you've you've gone out and bought a larger vice uh, sometimes these small vices come in handy and I've got a, a, a plan for this one. I've got a piece of plate here, this is the base plate of the of the vice uh, it's, it's six millimeters thick and it's got to end up uh, six inches long by three and a quarter wide. Now this has just been cut out with an angle grinder so the first thing I need to do is true that up and in the uh, similar way to, to, or same way that Rudy uh, did his, I've got this sitting on some, some blocks underneath and I'm going to mill these two sides parallel and then I'm going to swap my clamping over and then mill these two sides square and parallel uh, to this as well. Then there needs to be six holes put in there and, and, and countersunk. Now the holes, uh, the two in the middle there and two down this end, so I've got my blocks set in a little bit so that I'm not going to dr be drilling through to them. But first of all, I need to get this thing squared up. Now this is the basis for uh, the vise, but also everything gets built on top of it, so it needs to be uh, pretty good. So the base plate, uh, six inches by uh, two and a quarter. And these holes, they're all they're drilled for. Well, I've drilled them for M8. The drawing calls up uh, five sixteenth, but uh, Imperial stuff is getting harder to find in Australia, so I'm going metric. And I've kind of countersunk them so that the the head is just slightly under flush of the surface. Um, so that, those ones are central, they're, they're um, uh, three eighths in from the end, as are those, uh, three quarter inch, three quarter inch, and that's, that's your base plate. Worth noting too that these holes, uh, I had this set up on the mill and, and all that sort of thing, so I just put them on the mill, but there's no, there's no reason why you couldn't have marked those out and then drill and, and uh, countersunk. Um, just depends on what you've got available. As I said, I had it set up on the mill and that was what I wanted to do. The next bit that goes, that's gonna go onto here are these pieces. And these are the rails for the vise. The instructions said use bright bar. Now once again, bright bar, hard to find in small quantities. So I used some uh, black bar, which I've machined down. So that's, that's now uh, inch and a half by three quarters. 
and that's going to go on those three mounting holes. Now, this gets reduced down to 1.375, so what's that, inch and three eighths, so I lose an eighth off the top of that. But what I think I'll do is I'll take these to size, then drill and tap them to mount on the, on the holes there, and then once that's all done, I think I'll then take that down. And that'll, that'll do two things for me. One of them is that uh, it means these two surfaces are going to be parallel. But the second thing is that because I've got this drilled and tapped onto this base plate, I've then got somewhere to hold it. So that's, that's the next thing, is basically drill and tap these. These are my side rails. I've scribed a mark down there, put the cross marks in. I've marked the end that I've, I, is most square, and I've started from that. What I thought I'd show you though is that these days when I'm putting down centre marks I used to just use one punch but after a while it'd get blunted to give me some problems so I found, I don't know where, um, a little punch, this is a, a starret punch but with it, it being sharp, I can feel where the lines intersect and so using my hammer head I'll give it a light tap once I've marked them all, I can then go back and find that much more easily with the the big centre punch, and so I can give that a, a, a much better belt uh, and, and start my drill off that way. So just something to, to think about. If you want to try and feel where your lines are, a small punch like that, as I said, it's a star at this one, um, makes it just a little bit easier to, to, to find the intersection. Tapped bars, countersunk plate. Now. I've done something a little bit cunning here, which I hope I don't regret. Rudy's original instructions were that that would be a through hole, and these two would be tapped. And the idea behind it would be that you'd put your, your, your plate up there, do that up, uh, and this one, eventually this, when the, when the, the top, uh, the, the fixed jaw is there, that bolt goes straight through to the fixed jaw. He's also saying put Loctite on there, and on the on the thread so that they um, you know it, it, it bonds doesn't move all that sort of thing what I've done is I've actually made that hole a through hole but to the tapping drill size and then tapped it for M8 and what I'm going to do is use just a, a hex head screw with a washer uh, to clamp that down so when I put my Loctite on I put Loctite on that screw and that screw I'll put Loctite on this surface but I won't put any on this screw and the theory is that I should be then be able to, once that's dry and Loctite generally takes around about 24 hours to go off, uh, I should be able to undo that and do all my other bits and pieces. Uh, and it also means I can then, um, you know, I've got, I've got three points of support when I machine this down and all that sort of thing. So that's, that's the plan. Here's progress as it stands. So I've got my uh, beams bolted onto my base plate. And I must admit I chickened out a bit. I didn't uh, put these uh, screws in straight away. I actually clamped this in the vise overnight and then put the screws in because uh, I was a bit concerned that with the Loctite I was using I might find that I couldn't get these out. I think I'm pretty right now. It's, it's dryish, so I'll have to take my chances. One thing I did do, I, I mentioned drilling this through with a tapping drill, but I actually counter drilled from the top here down to about there somewhere so that... Um, I've just got a little bit of thread down here and the, and the bolt is, is free. This is eventually going to be drilled out and have a longer bolt going in there to hold the fixed jaw, so it's not a problem. Now, I did this by uh, drilling and tapping the holes in the base plate. I did this by uh, drilling and counting sink sinking the holes in the base plate here and then drilling some corresponding holes in the, in the beams and bolting it all up and measuring across here I've got around about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimetre difference, so uh, it's not it's not perfect, but it's it's not too bad. And the next thing that'll happen is I'll, I'll run a, um, a, a a couple of cuts across here just to drop these down in size because they they need to be about uh, three millimetres shorter. And then I'll come along and put a um, what would you call it a step a rebate in the sides of these, and that's what the the fixed sorry, the, the travelling jaw is going to be uh, running on. So that slight movement doesn't matter too much. Now in Rudy's instructions, he talked about getting a bit of um, 3 8 uh, tool steel, 
putting that in there, standing that so that was vertical, then clamping it so you could then spot through the holes uh, into the, the beam. Now, I don't like that idea terribly much uh, because to spot through successfully, you've got to really use the same drill that you've used for the, for the bolt. So I'd have to use a, an eight millimeter drill and then just enough to mark it then swap over to the tapping drill which was 6.8 so um, it is one way of doing it it's not the way I, I, I prefer but uh, so, uh, you know you can get results that way so yes either drill and tap and live with the results or uh, do it as Rudy did tool steel to act as a spacer clamp drill uh, spot drill through that's where I where I am, uh, and I'm quite pleased with that at the moment. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you for the next one.